Maybe if I plugged it in. The reason for gluing the thin piece onto the thicker piece was just to make the whole pattern just a little thicker so that I won't be worried that it'll freeze off before the whole mold fills when I go to cast it. This side I'm going to actually use as the back side of the, of the pattern. These lines will give me a guide to sand up to and my, my sander that when you put tilt it, it goes down like that. So if I sand up to this line like that, the draft that it puts on it will be right for using this side as the face of the pattern. So I've got the table tilted down five degrees, about approximately anyway, and locked in place. So now I'm gonna sand draft on these edges. So we've got our draft on all four sides here. It's pretty good. Pretty good. So you saw me sand draft on the edges here and on the inside of these curves. What I did after that off camera was I sanded this really smooth uh, with just some fine sandpaper on this glass coaster I used as a kind of a block. Um, I also sanded draft onto these border pieces. Um, which was really fiddly and I should have glued them on first and then sanded the draft onto the sides after that because uh, I'm still going to have to do that. I made sure I glued them on so that they're just sticking out just a hair so that um, I can take them back out to the sander and even them up. Um, I think what I'm going to do is cast one of these blank just to have as a pattern 
but I did also um, sand draft onto the sides of the numbers. Um, but there, there's all still, you know, you see some gaps all around here. And I'm going to have to put some fillets all around here. So I've got this putty stuff. This is fast drying, sands easily, long life. Sounds good to me. I've had this sitting around for a few years, so hopefully it's still good. There's many, many warnings about the vapors, so this is sure to be lots of fun. Warning, flammable vapor harmful. Read cautions. Keep out of reach of children. Do not smoke. Extinguish all flames, pilot lights, and heaters. Avoid electric stoves, electric tools, and appliances. Use only with adequate ventilation. So you know it's got to be the good stuff. Squishy. That's not really sticky like I thought it would be until it's been drying for a few seconds. It seems like. But I think it's working. Yeah, once it starts to set up a little bit, there's a. You can smooth it out a little more. Seems like. So, I, uh, I did all the fillets all the way around um, to get a nice little radius in here so it's easy to pull out of the sand. Um, these little stir sticks, they do have rounded ends which you'd think would be good but they're not perfectly smooth. I had some kind of like a ball bearing tip item to use to do these fillets, it would be ideal. but I mostly ended up using my fingertips seemed to be the easiest way to work with that putty but um, you see I got the seams filled in where the edges of these borders fit together uh, pretty consistent fillet so I gotta get it back out onto the sander to get these edges evened up and then do some hand sanding on it, maybe a little more putty, and then hand sanding if there's any little gaps. But other than that, it's just about ready to, uh, to spray paint and mold up. So here's the new pattern. Uh, right there, bug. It's, uh, it's a plaque. It's a Cast like street numbers or whatever. It's hard to see on camera, but there's it's slanted that way out on all sides, so it'll pull out of the sand from you know being face down. Along here, this is what we call a knife gate. Um, comes right off the runner there. Okay, this is all one piece. Got the sprue well. I got a like a turkey baster to cut the end off of so that it fits down into here. It's a little wider than the other sprue pattern I use, but it's tapered, which is good. 
so you can keep the sprue filled through the whole pour. Um, and on the far side here, I think it's called the trash gate. But, uh, anyway, um, if I was smart, I would have made this all one piece and had this gate as wide as the whole thing and just put the trim on there. So I wouldn't have to glue it on. All these fillets are done in here too with that green putty. Same with you know, the hole that I had in here from drilling that and where this this is actually two pieces like that I glued together so I filled up the gaps in here as well, smooth it out. So yeah, basically that's how I set it up. If it came out well, then hopefully later if I get another good weekend and enough free time, you might get to see me uh, cast one that has numbers on it using today's casting as a pattern. Here's the new flask. Um, see the alignment pins are just some long quarter inch bolts uh, that I bolted through some angle iron lined up with the other with the top half of the flask. Um, these things seem to work pretty well, keeping it from uh, from wanting to lift. can't be, you know, in a different spot than they were last time they were clamped together. So it's uh, 12 inches deep, 16 inches wide or long, and those are the inside dimensions. Um, yeah, you notice that I put the pins sticking up from the drag, um, which is, I've seen a lot of people including myself having them sticking down from the cope but uh, I guess sticking up from the drag is the way the, the pros do it, at least some of them um, I when, the board I used to mold these on it comes out to you know about here the pin you know it, it, it clears the edge of the, the board on both sides so uh, you know, if I got a, a little bit longer board and it didn't, I could use it as a match plate. Um, I just have to drill a hole to line up with, with this. Well, I didn't get the camera set up in time to, uh, to get the pour. As you can see, I also couldn't find my usual ingot tray pan so I used this old muffin pan from my early days of backyard casting uh, still holds metal uh, the mold you see I vented it well got this window sash locks on it proper pins that come up from the drag uh, how, how easy it is to tell but I got it propped up on an angle so that the uh, metal has to flow uphill and it just has a one front of metal advancing as opposed to spreading out over if it was laying flat it might spread out and surround bubbles of air cause all kinds of trouble so when this cools down I'll, uh, I'll make sure I actually do film the shakeout and we'll, we'll see how it turned out I don't know if it's going to be useful for a pattern or just as a test of my existing pattern see if it still needs work but we'll see when we come to that I've undone the little uh, locks on the sides well so far that looks pretty good Let's 
still a little hot. Oh, here's that uh, that new sprue pattern. That's funny. Let's get this ring on it. It's a little sanding, but it doesn't look too bad. This came out quite nice. And I can still see the kind of the wood grain from the original pattern. I think I can sand off these edges. Oh, they're not too bad. A little rough here. I think this is what's going to work. So what I'll do... Ah, I'm just going to cut the sprue off right there. And this whole thing, the rest of it, is going to be the pattern. And I'll just glue house numbers or what have you on this. Cast it peel them back off so I can reuse this background to make as many of these uh, plaques as I want. So, I don't know why you can see that. It's hot. Came out pretty good. Like I said, a little sanding. There's no shrink on it. Fillets seem to do their job. Barely any flashing. Oh, that's right. I want to say thank you to Clark E. who uh, commented on my skull shaped candy dish uh, video. He gave me this tip that when you're molding a flat back pattern in the drag, you should wrap the pattern to loosen it before you ram up the coat. Uh, before I had always been wrapping it when I was ready to remove it after the cope and the drag had both been made. So uh, that's supposed to help reduce any flashing. So you knock it around a little, loosen it up, and you blow out any loose grains, and then you make the cope. So well, that's what I did this time. And uh, I'd say it worked because you can see it's barely in this tiny bit here, but I mean, my sand was also almost frozen when I rammed up this mold. So that was part of it too. Um, and that's easily sanded off. So, this is, I think I, it's, it worked. It's a good one. I'm going to use it. And I hope, I hope that I'll get another chance to cast something using this before Christmas. Otherwise, I have more shopping to do than I hope. This uh, ring shape, which I guess must have been where the, the metal was flowing in from here, but I don't know what happened right when it got to here. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't let up on the pour. The sprue stayed choked. I don't know. I don't know if these little these little kind of funny spots what that is is that dross that got in there I don't know I had a tough time skimming this crucible for some reason um, could be a little bit of dross could just be from some loose sand that was in the mold uh, like I said I was I was when I was ramming it up it was, it was oh, the sand was almost frozen so it wasn't as sticky as normal and it did sit overnight now i don't think my sand's going to dry out overnight in this cold but you know i kind of act like it's dry grains loosen up could get washed around in there uh don't know if this caught any junk compared to the rest of it but what matters is the good side does look quite good. Uh, it doesn't have that that wave here. 
And I'm not sure what matter that so much of it did. There are some little some little dots like there's one there. I don't know if that's from where I vented the mold. Maybe I hit the pattern with my vent wire. Not sure. Um Yeah, otherwise I think it's gonna work be I might sand it down a little. I'm definitely gonna sand these edges and all along the outside. Um, like I said, this is all gonna be a pattern. Once I cut off the sprue here, the rest of it's just gonna be one big pattern with the gating built into it, since now I know that it works. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty happy with it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Well, and uh, so one other thing about this casting. This 12 by 16 mold, the, I remember the cope is four inches tall. I think the drag is two and a half. This took almost all of my sand to make this mold. Um, when I bought the sand, it was supposed to be 100 pounds of it. And there wasn't much left in the bench after I was done ramming this thing up. Uh, of course, I always lose a little tiny bit every time I use it. And, uh, you know, the weight of it depends on how much water it is in it to some extent. Anyway, yeah. So this thing was was a bit of a beast to to haul out to the backyard and set down in place. To cast it, I had to set it down several times and take a little rest. Anyway, it's surprising how heavy these molds can get. Um, this is the biggest one I've ever, ever made. Um, I really want to get more sand so that I can, I can do more than one mold at a time. Like my, my 12 by 12 molds, I don't have enough sand to do two of those. I can make some smaller flasks to cast, you know, some some of the little stuff, but most of my patterns do need at least the 12 by 12 flask. And now this one, this one fills this one up pretty good. You can see, uh, needs that length. Anyway, just thought I'd add that little bit about. How much this molds weigh? It's something you don't really realize until you gotta lift one up and carry it around. Alright, take it easy.